Welcome to Car Focus. Today we're going to be looking at the all new Subaru Outback. The Outback is probably one of Subaru's most iconic nameplates and its flagship SUV. It's just gotten a complete revamp, which is basically 25 years in the making. It's also now fitted with Subaru's 2.4 liter turbocharged direct injection boxer engine that's come straight out of the WRX. If you want to see our review on the WRX, just click the link above. It boasts what has now become one of Subaru's staples, which is the symmetrical all-wheel drive and the EyeSight Drive Assist. It also gets an impressive 2,400 kilogram braked towing capacity, while ground clearance now stands at 213 millimeters. Stay tuned because we're about to go outback. We do cover quite a lot in these videos, so if there's something specific that you want to have a look at, don't forget to skip ahead on the chapters. The vehicle that we have with us today is the Subaru Touring XT. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the models next. So basically you get three different models. You get the Outback, the Sport and the Touring. All of them are all wheel drive, but only two of them, the Sport and the Touring, get an XT version. And besides a few other bits and pieces, the significant difference is that the XT variants are turbocharged. So with the addition of the XT option, the model lineup grows to five. All five models get an eight-speed CVT gearbox. The normally aspirated version has a 2.5 liter, 138 kilowatt petrol engine. The XTs get a slightly smaller 2.4 liter, 183 kilowatt turbocharged engine. So looking at the front of the Outback, we've got the LED daytime running lights. Car also has adaptive headlights. Probably the most important thing that we need to mention at the front of the vehicle is the, the EyeSight Assist system that Subaru has patented and has become famous for. This system forms part of their Zero Fatalities by 2030 mission and is kind of distinctly highlighted by the two cameras that sit just on either side of the rear view mirror and essentially act like two eyes that are constantly filming the road and watching around the vehicle to see what's going on. Essentially the system, it integrates and brings together seven other systems that the vehicle has and combines the information that it reads from these systems to give you a safer drive. These systems are the pre-collision braking system and brake assist, the pre-collision throttle management, the adaptive cruise control, the brake light recognition, lane keep assist, and lane departure warning systems. It also has a lead vehicle start alert. When you look at the front of the vehicle, there's a few things that jump out. Straight away is the signature, some of the signature moves that, that Subaru is doing on all of their cars. This little flick that you'll see on all their headlights and tail lights has become a bit of a signature headlight for all their cars and, and makes them stand out and makes them instantly recognizable as Subarus. They've broken up the front grille really nicely. They've used a lot of different colors in here, a bit of black, a bit of body color, some chrome and some aluminium finish as well just to give you a range of different colors going through here so that it breaks it up nicely it's got the front headlight washers over there the led fog lights with this chrome finish strip around it the subaru badge bold in the front front camera which is actually standard now on uh, on all the cars as it forms part of the safety package and the second little grill at the bottom here with this honeycomb finish so looking underneath the bonnet the first thing that you're going to notice is the 2.4 liter boxer engine that's out of the WRX. A lot of similarities in the way that it's mounted, in the way that it's set up. It's definitely drawing the cues there from, from that vehicle. So the first thing is this intercooler that sits right at the top here that is actually fed by this air scoop attached to the top of the bonnet. So that's feeding it cool air all the time, making sure that we're getting nice cold air coming in there. Now the one we have here today is the XT, which means it is turbocharged. So we looked at the model lineup earlier in the Sport and the Touring, you can option in the XT and if you go to the XT, you get the turbo. So this one is the turbocharged version and you can see all the bigger intakes over here uh, that feed from the intercooler to the turbo system and then back into the engine. So unlike the WRX, the intercooler doesn't have its own dedicated scoop to feed it air. Instead, what they've done is underneath the bonnet, they've created a, a I guess a ventilation scoop you can call it that feeds air from this top part of the grill directly onto the intercooler. On the side of the vehicle you do have the privacy glass on the on the two rear windows and quite a large actually third window over here to give good visibility on the blind spot but also creates a lot of room in the cabin which we'll have a look at later. The styling these now have also become iconic wheel arches that the, that the Subarus kind of have become signature moves there as well. The one that we have here today is the white. It does have a fair bit of black that breaks up the color again. And it also has these silver strips that run across the top and the bottom of the windows. And they also wrap around the rear view mirrors. The roof rail on the, on the outback is a unique new design. And it actually does fold out and turn into crossbars as well. The 
outback badging that runs across the bottom over here as well as a quite a pronounced guard all the way down the side of the vehicle this would be really handy and useful off-roading just protect the bodywork of the vehicle and comes up quite high and protects the doors as well uh, moving across to the rear view mirrors they have an aluminium finish on the mirror as well as the same silver styling that runs through the windows also runs through the mirror there and just finishes it off really nicely as well as the blind spot detection in the mirror all the Subarus come with an 18 inch Bridgestone tire and an alloy wheel they also all come standard with a fifth alloy and a full size spare wheel so if you are going to take them off-roading do have that that full size spare wheel in case anything happens and you need it Looking at the back of the vehicle, starting from the top, we've got the little shark fin aerial that actually sits below the height of the roof rail, so you know you're never going to have a height clearance issue with it. You've got a very stylish rear spoiler that sticks out here and locks into the sides there as well, just to complete the styling of the vehicle, the high-mounted stoplight, the Subaru logo, car pronounced over there, as well as the symmetrical all-wheel drive logo, which is a unique Subaru technology, and the XT badge on the one that we have here today. A quick shout out to Renella Subaru for giving us this car today to do this little walkthrough for you. Just staying on the styling on the rear bar here as well, you've also got the, the four sensor system. You also have a, the tow bar. The tow bar has two different towing capacities. The one is for the XTs that can do 2,400 kilograms and the normally aspirated version of the Outback can tow 2,000 kilograms. Similarly, the tow ball, down ball weight is 200 and 240 on the XT. LED rear tail lights and again with that same flick that has become a Subaru signature they seem to be putting it on all their front and rear tail lights to make them instantly recognizable. Power tailgate on the Touring XT that we have here today. There is also an extensive selection of accessories available for the Outback and one of them that we have here today is this rubberized load liner that's also got a lip so in case you ever spill anything in it um, you can quite carefully bring it out and not wet or damage your car. Inside, there's quite a lot going on here, as you'd expect. There's these really handy handles that, you, if you just pull them, can lower the seats. There's also a lot of little tie-down points, four of them running through there. You also have this little tie-down point, which is actually spring-loaded, that can come out, probably catch a small little bag or something, and then clip back in so that it doesn't go rolling around. On this side, you've got the Harman Kardon, part of the nine-speaker sound system that's standard on the XTs. And on the other side, you have a little storage compartment with a little net. You also have a charge point over there and another one of those spring-loaded catches just there. This little cover is really well designed. A lot of the times, <laughs> you, I find myself fumbling around trying to figure out how to lift these. This one's really simple. You just push down and release a very clever little handle that's hidden in there and you can lift it up. It's also got this very clever little hook over here that you can just use to hook over there and it keeps that up so if you need to get to the tools you don't have to hold that up at the same time and then to put it away real simple just slide it back in there and once that's up you can see underneath here you've got your tool storage and a full-size spare wheel with a fifth alloy. The tools are all really handy and put together in this one easy to remove and considering what it is quite light little compartment which can then just slot back in there really neatly. Inside this, this toolbox, uh, one of the extra items that's worth mentioning is this little torque wrench over here, which is used for the, the adjustable roof rails that we're gonna have a look at. This parcel shelf is also definitely worth mentioning. It is retractable, um, and it does what any ordinary retractable parcel shelf can do, which is just retract out here, and then it gives you this angle here to just tie in with the closed tailgate. However, as we all know, sometimes when you go on long trips, you end up filling the boot with more luggage and you end up put getting pressure and stuff pushing up against this parcel shelf. So this has actually been designed to give you a second height setting and all you simply do is slide it into this other rail that exists there and then all of a sudden it sits that little bit higher so that it gives you more height to load goods while still protecting them from coming into the cabin and at the same time still giving you some form of visibility out of the rear window. Very clever to remove it. You just bring it back down here like that um, and it actually just clips out on this side it comes up and out and i think it's actually been designed to remove from the inside because it's easier to move it forward than backwards and just like that you get this massive loading area like i always do i've put this seat in front of me in a, in a position where i'd be comfortable I uh, matched it up with my driving position actually and you can see here massive amounts of legroom in the back as well as a, a lot of 
nice foot room underneath the chair there so i really like it it's got multiple pockets here it's actually got a, a small one like a, a, a three-quarter one or a two-thirds one and then the, and then a full one over there so it's almost got three little compartments that you can use around the back there now the one we've got here today is the touring so it does get the napa leather and you can definitely feel the quality finish throughout the whole cabin of the car you get a little bit of white stitch you get a little bit of dove gray stitching through the seats and then you get white stitching through the carpets just to match that up and tie it in the armrest center armrest over there with two cup holders with these little rubbers to keep the cups in place as well as a piano black finish around there it's nice and wide so you do have a lot of room here the other one is the center air vent so you do get two center air vents um, that you can control open and close you also get heated rear outboard seats and in addition to that you get two usb a charging points over there they're both rated as fast chargers the headroom at the back is really good um, i do like that they've done a white roof lining or uh, and top part of the car because it does tend it breaks up the, the inside really nicely and creates a little bit more light. Three rear head restraints. You've also got your isofix points. The other one that they made special mention of is the fact that the rear seats recline. So on the 60-40 split, you've got two different reclining handles, one on this side and one on the other side, and you can actually recline the 60-40 split independent of, it, of, of itself um, using the two different handles. So inside the cabin, really comfortable, quite cozy actually is the word that, that jumps out of me when just jumping in here. Everything is very well made. Uh, the Napa leather is very soft, very comfortable. This area here where your knee would kind of rest on long trips is, is actually quite soft to the touch. So it would be really comfortable. They've also got this beautiful stitching all the way through the front dash here, and they've actually continued on with the same leather onto the dashboard with the same stitching all the way across here. So really high quality finish and a very nice little storage space in there, as well as the glove box, which opens up just there. The air vents tie in really neatly with the stitching and just continue on neatly onto the dashboard with this aluminum finish over there, which continues onto the door and the door handle. On the driver's door, you have this very well finished little control panel. You've got auto, auto window operation for all the windows with one touch, your central locking, your mirrors and your folding mirrors just there. You also have the memory seats over there with two positions. Moving across here, the same quality leather finish all the way through the door here. And again, across onto the dash there, all the way to the start button. Just underneath there, you have your tailgate operation buttons for the power tailgate. This little switch here is your rear stat switch, which brightens and dims the dash display. And then you've also got a lock button for the rear tailgate, so you can actually lock it so that it won't open or close. All right, so just having a look at the steering wheel on this side, you've got all of your intelligent cruise control and cruise control settings, as well as your different modes that you can set, which is your normal and your sport mode. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more on the modes later. Over here, you have this very cool button that they've decided to add over here, which is your heated steering wheel button. So it almost feels like a little tiny paddle shifter, and you just push it towards you to activate and push it towards you to deactivate. You also do have the actual paddle shifters, uh, which once you slide the gear lever into manual, um, you can operate this like an eight-speed manual car. On this side, you've got all of your trip computer controls as well as your phone and audio controls as well as your voice assistant and just underneath there uh, is you have your volume control buttons all right so looking at the dash analog rev counter with heat gauge and an analog speedometer with a fuel gauge i really like analog so if you do too then this will be right up your alley right in the middle of the two analog dials is our little digital display and on there we get all the settings from the smart cruise control the gear position indicators uh, your speed what device you're connected to so all the all the normal things that you'd expect to see in a little digital display like the one in front of us there so we're in normal and then we go snow and it just goes x mode snow dirt um, or you can go to deep snow and mud mode um, and that mode actually deactivates um, the electronic stability program so it actually allows you to to spin a little bit so sometimes you know if you're in snow or mud you'd actually need to be able to spin to get a bit of traction on something so the other thing to mention about the modes is that Subaru calls them calls it X mode what it really says when you start reading some of the literature around it it means that it's kind of intelligently adjusting the mode for you so that there's not a lot that you have to do so you just put it into normal snow 
or deep, deep snow mud and then it kind of just compensates and adjusts everything automatically for you. It also does it on the fly apparently, reading, taking in information from different sensors like the ESP and the ABS, putting that all together and understanding when you need traction, when you don't need traction and compensating accordingly. All right, so we've already spoken about eyesight assist and vision assist, and I guess the third leg in the safety setup on these new Subarus is the driver monitoring system, which sits just in there. And what the driver monitoring system does is it detects if you're distracted, if you're getting drowsy, and it also has Subaru's facial recognition software, which, which can tell which driver has actually climbed into the car, and then it will set all your settings according to to what you've set them at. That includes electric seats, it includes modes, it even includes the aircon settings that it'll put them back to where you had them last. Looking at the center console, it is set up to be really simple to use. It's actually split into three sections. This top section over there, the main the middle section, and then the smaller section at the bottom, which relates more to the air conditioning system. Just looking at the top here, you do have your different drive modes, but you can also scroll through here and then get to your accelerometer, which kind of just detects at what percentage you're accelerating, fuel consumption, as well as angle of descent and ascent that you can use if you're off-roading. And then over here is the, the sat nav will tell you what road you're on when you're in that menu. And then this little menu is for your radio. So it's got four little menus at the top. In the center section, you have what look like apps. The first one being your maps, your radio, your media. You can set up a phone there. Your auto start stop functionality is set up over there. You also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, both of which are wireless. Then you have your car settings, which are quite in depth your car information and you can also use this button to switch off the display and that is for long um, distance nighttime driving because you don't want all of this light to tire out your eyes. You can also scroll across the screen to find more menus so your auto vehicle hold or auto auto hold is situated just there. Vehicle dynamic controls you also have a pin code locker and, and a shortcut menu. You can also like you can do on, on most smartphones you can touch and hold a little icon and you can move it around from one screen to the next. If you wanted to go to that screen, you can just drop it there like you would with any smartphone. And there it's just swapped those two buttons around, around for us. Okay. And then at the bottom, you've got your aircon controls. You also get heated seats and in the XT Touring, you get ventilated seats um, that you can control there as well as your traditional air speeds and aircon climate control through there. Your electric bark brake is situated just there with auto hold. You've also got a USB-A, a USB-C, and a more traditional little jack point just over there that you can plug things into. You've got your gear shifter with your park reverse neutral drive and manual, so everything you'd expect from a, from a traditional shifter, as well as your 360 degree view camera button that you can activate from there. Once activated, you'll actually notice on the screen here your camera settings, and this is the front of the car. You may have noticed earlier that it doesn't actually have any front sensors, so it is relying on that camera just there and that little red line through there to make sure that you don't touch anything while parking moving forward. Over here, you've got two cup holders. They're pretty deep, very deep cup holders, so you could probably hold a, a bottle in there or a very large cup of coffee or soda. It also has this little guy. So he's just a little rubber stopper that you can fit to the bottom of either of the two cup holders just to make them that little bit shorter so that if you do have a small cup of coffee, um, you don't want it disappearing into your cup holder. And that's what he's for. Your center armrest, nice and wide, so you comfortably fit two arms here without having to fight over it. Um, it also has two different opening settings. So the first one is like that, and it reveals this little compartment just there for if you want to put something small um, or even a smartphone actually could fit nicely in there, which uses the other switch, um, almost like a hidden magic trick. It takes that little compartment with it and then reveals this much larger compartment in there. Another thing that Subaru still does, uh, which I think they're the only manufacturer that still does it, they still give you a CD player in the car. So that drive on lock, you can actually set that so that the doors lock on gear shift or when the door opens or at the speed. You can do all that through the settings, not while driving though, obviously. <laughs> Say if you were comparing this to perhaps an Everest, which is another capable off-roader and a sports utility vehicle, 
this is a five seater where that's a seven seater um, that's probably a slightly larger car compared to this one well, they would both be pretty capable in an off-road situation although Everest does have low range so I would, I would put Everest more as a as a true four-wheel drive or off-roader uh, whereas the Outback is what it says it is it's a sports utility vehicle so it's a vehicle that can move comfortably from the city to the off-road and back again just a simple example of those really cleverly designed roof rails that can be adjusted to to go um, vertically across or horizontally across the the roof they're really easy to use to clip in and out and the only time you really need to use the little torque wrench is if you want to move the position to the uh, and move the one the one rail further back um, so they are versatile like that don't forget to subscribe and if you've got any other vehicles that you'd like us to cover off on leave them in the comments below